We are continuing our discussion about populations and how different populations affect each other and affect the ecosystem. So we're going to continue that. Um, today we're going to talk about actually how populations grow and change. Okay, so just as a review, a population is looking at all of the individuals of a species that live together within an area. Um, populations usually increase, but it is affect those um, populations are affected by the resources in that environment. So limited resources are going to limit the growth of a population. We are looking at three key features of a population. So when, when scientists go into an environment and they're looking at the populations that are there, the different species and how they interact and how they grow and develop, they're actually looking at three different things. They're looking at the size, so they're actually looking at the number of individuals in a population. They're looking at density, so when they're looking at density, they're looking at um, within a given area, how many individuals are in that area versus the number of individuals within a population within a large area. Density just takes a little section and counts the number of any individual that lives within that area. And then dispersion is actually looking at how those um, individuals of a population are arranged within that space. And there's three different types of dispersion that they look at. They can describe a population as clumped or even a random. So let me show you what that looks like. A clumped population is going to be where um, those organisms tend to live in groups or in herds. So this example is actually looking at some elephants, and we know elephants live in herds, and there can be many different herds within a large ecosystem, but um, that is a clumped uh, population. An even population is looking at populations that are distributed evenly, so there's equal amounts of spaces between those um, between those organisms. So the picture here is looking at trees that are evenly distributed throughout that environment. And then random is actually just looking at organisms. There might be a few here, there might be a little bit more here, or there might be a couple over here. There's no rhyme or reason, but they don't necessarily have to live in groups either. Okay, so here's another example. So clumped, again, we're looking at like schools of fish, and you can see in my example here, we've got a small clump here and a small clump here and a small clump here. Even distribution or uniform distribution, um, they're giving this one an example of some penguins, and you can tell that they're kind of, I mean, there's a pretty even um, pattern within this, within this population. Another example of uniform distribution might be um, predators that live independently, so like snakes, where they each have their own little area and they're very territorial. So that might be more of a uniform type of, dis of dispersion. And then random here, um, typically this is more like um, weeds, or this one's looking at ferns, where they're not necessarily clumped together, but there's no real rhyme or reason to how they are distributed throughout the environment. Another thing, so we talked about growth and size, and then we talked about dispersion. So when we're talking about growth, we're looking at the birth rate minus the death rate. So here's a couple of examples. In Cedar Grove, 15 babies were born in the year 2000, and four residents died. So what would be the growth rate? Hopefully you said 11. Um, the next example, in Springfield, 70 babies were born in the year 2000, and 80 residents died. So what was the growth rate? Hopefully you said negative 10. So there can actually be a negative um, growth rate, and that's where the death, um, the death is more than the birth within that year. Um, we also look at patterns of population growth. So there's two types of... Um, of population growth that scientists look at, exponential growth or logistic growth. So let's take a look at each of these. Exponential growth is where the rate of growth um, stays about the same. So I'm not talking about where the number of, of deaths equal the number of births. So I'm not saying the, the rate stays the same this way. I'm talking about it's an exponential increase in the amount of organisms that are born or move into the area within that population. When the population is plotted against time on a graph, it's gonna look like a J, okay? So exponential growth 
looks like a J. And you can see here on the graph, whoop, it goes up like this. So we're looking at the number of population over time. This typically occurs when individuals on a population reproduce at a constant rate. They reproduce very quickly. They have lots of offspring typically. Um, so this might be examples like um, bacteria, which reproduce every 15 minutes about, um, weeds, other small insects and stuff like that. Things that overproduce and it doesn't take a long time for those organisms to reproduce. Now, um, here's some more examples. Cockroaches, bleh, weeds, bacteria, all of those are going to have exponential growth. But exponential growth can't last forever. Um, there are definitely some things that cause a population to stop growing or cause that population growth to slow down. And that's when resources become less available. So once you get a huge increase in organisms or uh, numbers of that population within an area, they're gonna start competing for resources. So when that happens, the, the environment can't sustain that much of a population. Or when the number of deaths exceed the number of births, that is definitely gonna slow down the population growth. So when population growth is limited, we say that this is logistic growth. And I think of it this way, that is logical. An environment can't sustain an unlimited amount of organisms. That's a logical explanation, okay? So lo logistic growth is going to look like this. It's more of an S-shaped curve where initially we get exponential growth. And this is maybe when a um, population, a new population moves into an area. So it starts at zero and it's gonna start rapidly increasing because there are enough resources to sustain this amount of um, population growth. But then once it gets up here, um, once we have Lim once we're limited by density dependent factors, so once we're limited by factors that have an effect on the number of organisms that can survive in that environment, we start to um, see a, um, a limit or that population growth starts to stay constant, okay? And we say that this is an S-shaped curve and you can see that's kind of an S right there. Um, some examples of organisms that typically follow a logistic growth curve are humans. We are still in the exponential growth, unfortunately. Eventually, we're going to have to level out probably pretty soon. Elephants, lions. So typically, these are larger organisms that take a little bit longer to reach reproductive maturity and then take a while for, those, um, for their offspring to develop and then themselves grow to reproductive maturity. They typically don't have as many offspring, okay? Those are going to be um, examples of organisms that typically follow that logistic growth curve. Um, populations are going to be limited by space and food and water and mates and a whole bunch of other different things. So when that population reaches that limit that that environment can sustain, we call that the carrying capacity, okay? This is another one of your big vocab words. The carrying capacity is the maximum number of individuals that that environment can sustain or hold in a space, okay? So anytime you see, um, this is a line and we say, we, um, we use the initial K to, um, to be the carrying capacity, okay? And there may not be a necessarily a line drawn across the graph like this, but what you will see is that carrying, when an organism, I'm sorry, when a population reaches carrying capacity, it's gonna start leveling off. And you might actually see where it varies up and down around that carrying capacity, and that's natural. So sometimes there'll be more organisms born um, that can be sustained, and so then you'll see it, um, a drop because there's more of a competition, and then they'll be underneath that carrying capacity, so it will be able to support more, and I'll kind of keep going back and forth like that. All right, so we talked about how populations grow within an ecosystem, but we haven't talked about yet some of the things that affect how that population grows. There's two different kinds of factors that we look at in terms of limitations of population growth. The first one is density dependent factors, okay? And these are factors that have a greater impact on larger or more dense populations. So the bigger populations are gonna have more um, competition for those limited resources, space and food and water, air, mates, okay? So the more of a population there is, the larger or more dense that population, 
the more competition there's going to be for these limited resources. So that's going to have an effect on how large that population can grow. Another one that we talk about um, is disease. Disease isn't necessarily a limited resource, but the bigger, more dense a population is, the more disease can spread throughout that population. So that is definitely a limiting factor as well. Density independent factors are factors that affect all populations regardless of their size, regardless of their density, okay? So regardless of how many organisms there are in that population, these factors are gonna affect them all. So this would be um, typically random occurrences like earthquakes, bad weather, tornadoes, fires, anything that equally disturbs population growth for any type of population. Those are going to be independent factors. Those are independent of how dense or how big that population gets. Okay, so here's a couple different limiting factors and I want you in your head to classify them as density dependent or density independent. Competition, unusual weather, disease, not enough mates, natural disasters, deforestation. Hopefully you said density dependent, density independent, density dependent, density dependent, density independent, and density independent. All right, so now that we've talked about factors that limit population growth, and we've talked about the two types of population growth, I now want to quickly talk about the types of populations that grow those certain ways, okay? R strategist, R stands for reproduction, and these are organisms that reproduce extremely quickly and overpopulate, okay? So R stands for reproduce. R strategists typically have a short lifespan, so they don't live very long. They reproduce very quickly. They have lots of offspring, and they don't provide a lot of parental care. This is going to typically follow the exponential curve. An example that we've talked about before, cockroaches, weeds, turtles, um, bacteria, so they are constrained by rate of population increase, okay? So what I want you to think about is these organisms are putting more energy into reproducing than they're putting into caring for their offspring, okay? And they're typically gonna have an exponential curve like this in growth. K strategists K for carrying capacity are going to be the organisms that typically survive around this carrying capacity line, okay? So these are going to be organisms that um, follow the logistic, uh, the logistic population growth curve. They are going to typically have a longer lifespan. They're going to reproduce slowly, which means they, they reach reproduction maturity later. It takes them longer to get there and then it may take them longer to develop that offspring. They typically have fewer young, but they take care of their offspring and they are constrained by carrying capacity. So examples are humans and elephants. These are examples of organisms that take care of their young. They typically don't have a ton, especially all at the same time. Um, and they're, instead of um, putting their energy resources into reproduction, they're putting their energy resources into making sure that their young stay alive long enough so that they can reproduce um, as they get old enough to do so. So that is population growth. I know I crammed a lot of information into a little bit of time, so make sure that you ask questions in class. We will practice, practice, practice this, but you need to make sure that you're on top of it and you're asking me questions and make sure that you understand everything. All right, so that is populations. And I will see you soon.